Hi everyone, my name's Tash. Thanks so much for having me today. Graham's asked me to be a part of our Summer Psalm series this week, so I'm going to be talking to you about my favourite psalm, which is Psalm 116. I thought it'd be really nice if we read it all together. So if you've got a Bible handy, or if you've got a Bible app on your phone, if you open it up to Psalm 116, we'll read through it together. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I was overcome by trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the simple-hearted. When I was in great need, he saved me. Be at rest once more, O oh my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, O oh Lord, had delivered my soul from death my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, and I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, therefore, I said, I am greatly afflicted, and in my dismay I said, all men are liars. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst. O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. As I said, this is one of my favourite psalms. The writer of the psalm passionately thanks God for God's steadfast presence in his life. They thank him for hearing them, for protecting them, for supporting them, and just for being present in their world. And although I think all of this, this psalm is great and worthy of talking about and analysing, I actually just wanted to speak to you today on the first two verses. I read this psalm out from the NIV, but I actually prefer the NRSV's translation of these first two verses, which is, I love the Lord. He has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. In that verse, it's that one phrase, because you have inclined your ear to me, I will pray for as long as I live. Other versions say, because you have bent down to listen, or because you have turned to listen to me. And I just love it. I love that in that one simple verse, the intimacy and the presence of God and his love for us are all expressed so simply. And I felt like the relationship between God and the psalmist here would be a great thing to talk about, particularly right now, four months into quarantine. Things are starting to ease up, but there's still a lot of anxiety around all of that. And I don't know about you, but along with the anxiety I've had about lockdown easing up, I've also felt a lot of guilt. I've seen some of my friends and they've talked about how productive they've been during lockdown. They've learnt new things, they've made stuff, they've started new enterprises and they've learnt so much and I felt guilty because I've been celebrating if I've just managed to get up and get fully dressed in the day. And when it comes to my spiritual life, I've heard other people talk about developing their own prayer routines or they've started this new spiritual practice and it all sounds incredible. But throughout the pandemic, I've been lucky if my prayers have progressed further than, God, what is going on? <laughs> but these two verses in Psalm 116 have really helped me throughout this time. They've really been a balm to my anxious soul. So I'm going to talk a bit more about them and I'm going to try and pull two specific points from these verses and those points are one, whoever you are and two, wherever you are. So point number one, whoever you are. This psalm 
Psalm 116 traditionally is traditionally been thought to have been authored by King David, the great Israelite king in the Old Testament. However, theologians and historians aren't 100% sure. The Psalms are kind of like an anthology or a compilation album. All the Psalms have been written separately and then brought together to, to, to form the book of Psalms that we have today, and that happened at a later date. And even though we think King David wrote Psalm 116, we're not entirely sure. But what I really love about this psalm is that whoever wrote it, and whenever it was wrote, doesn't really matter. And <laughs> for some of you, that will be a bit of a shock, because if you've ever heard me speak before, you'll know that I love banging on about context, <laughs> context, context. But for this psalm, I really don't think it matters because this psalm is written in a way which makes it easy to be picked up by anyone at any point in their life, wherever they're at on their journey with God, and for it to become their psalm, to become their cry out to God. And I think this point is really beautifully summed up by verses 1 and 2 in Psalm 116. There's no because I was a righteous man, or because I kept all of your decrees, Lord, which is language we sometimes find in the other Psalms. In these two verses, the relationship between the Psalmist and God is initiated by God. God bends down to listen. God inclined his ear to listen to us. I don't know about you, but just having that imagery of God bending down to listen to me really made me tangibly realise the closeness of God to me. And the same goes for you. God has turned his ear to listen to you. He's listening to you. And because this action is initiated by God without any prior commitment or action by the psalmist, we can confidently say that God is listening to you, no matter who you are, or should I more correctly say, whoever you think you are. And as I've previously said, I've been feeling guilty at this point in lockdown because I haven't been as spiritually productive as many of my other colleagues. I haven't carved out hours in the day for prayer and meditation. I haven't committed to reading X many chapters of the Bible a day. And that although I think those things are great, and if you are one of those people that has done that, I am in awe of you. But these verses of the psalm remind me that God's desire for relationship with us and God's desire to be part of our lives is not dependent on what we're doing or who we are or who we think we are or perceive ourselves to be. God is initiating the relationship with us. God bends down to listen before we even decide to speak. My second point is the wherever point, it's wherever you are. As I said, I've not managed to carve out hours of my day and dedicate them to meditative prayer and reflection time with God. And I feel like I have very little excuse because I am single, I have no children, and I am a student. I should be able to find time in my day. But I've just felt too overwhelmed with everything to be able to put more than 10 minutes concentration to any one task. And that's included prayer. But what I love about verse 1 and verse 2 in Psalm 116 is that God initiates the relationship, God begins listening, and there's no mention of the psalmist retreating up a mountain or sitting down to be still. Now I do know that both of those things and many more examples of private retreated prayer can be found in the Bible. Jesus goes up a mountain to pray loads. So obviously those things are good and we should try to do them if we can. But this such psalm shows us that God's ability to listen to us is not dependent on whether we've retreated away from our day and we found a Zen place to sit and pray and meditate. God can and does listen to us in the busyness of our lives and the hectic chaos of our days. He's listening to us when we're making a family dinner. He's listening to us when we're doing the cleaning. 
he's listening to us when we're on that umpteenth Zoom call of the day. And he's listening to you right now. Not in a creepy big brother spy type of way, but in a caring, personal, peaceful kind of way. God has made himself accessible to us at all times, no matter what. Somebody um, who I really admire, who seemed to grasp the essence of these two verses of this psalm, is, is a guy called Brother Lawrence. Um, and if you don't know who Brother Lawrence is, <laughs> um, Brother Lawrence was uh, a monk. He was part of a monastery in Paris back in the 1600s. Um, and he worked in the kitchen of this priory. Um, he was just sort of cooked and did the dishwashing and stuff. And despite having what was considered at the time quite a lowly position in the Priory, many, many people would come and visit him because he did just this, what this psalm is saying. He dedicated to life, his life to what he called practising the presence of God. There is a little book which is a compilation of Brother Lawrence's writings and letters and maxims. And one of my favourite things from what he said is this. Brother Lawrence began this practice by cultivating a deep presence of God in his heart. He said that God's presence had to be maintained by the heart and by love rather than understanding and speech. In the way of God, he said, thoughts count for little, love does everything, and it is not necessary to have great things to do. I turn my little omelette in the pan for the love of God. When it is fi finished, if I have nothing to do, I lie myself on the ground and adore God, who gave me the grace to make it, after which I arise more content than a king. When I cannot do anything else, it is enough for me to have lifted a straw from the earth for the love of God. People seek for methods of learning to love God. They hope to arrive at it by I know not how many different practices. They take much trouble to remain in the presence of God in a quantity of ways. Is it not much shorter and more direct to do everything for the love of God? to make use of all the labours of one state in life and to show him that love and to maintain his presence within us by this communion of our hearts with his. There is no finesse about it. One has only to do it generously and simply. I think both Psalm 116 and what Brother Lawrence has written perfectly encapsulate what I'm trying to explain in these two points. The love of God for us means that whoever we are and wherever we are, we have the ability to be in conversation with God, the ability to be in the presence of God, because God is always present with us and in us, and God is always bent down to listen to us. There's no finesse or fanciness needed. And although spiritual practices are great, what God really desires is just intimacy with us. And what Psalm 116 has taught me is that that intimacy doesn't need to be complicated or convoluted. Intimacy isn't in grand gestures or bold statements. It's in just doing your everyday, normal life, but just trying to remember that whilst you're doing that, God is there, bent down, listening to you. And I suppose, finally, what I take as a challenge for myself, and I wonder if you'd like to have it as a challenge for yourselves as well, is what would your life look like if whilst you were going about your day-to-day -day duties, you just occasionally remembered, hey, God is listening. If whilst you're doing the washing up, you just remembered, hey, God is listening. Or whilst you're on the bus or the tube to your next appointment, hey, God is listening. Would you be able to find more ways to be intimate with God by just remembering he's listening and is with you whilst you're doing your everyday tasks. 
And as one final point, and I promise I will end after this, I promise. If you knew that God was listening to you right now, what would you say? Thanks so much for having me, Church. I hope I've said something of value today. Um, I care for you all, and I hope you all enjoy the rest of the service and have a really great week ahead.